G'day, I'm Warren Logie and this is Brisbane. The most iconic building in all of Brisbane is the Central Station Maccas, but Brisbane City Hall comes a close second. Back in the 1910s, Brisbane wasn't lacking in natural beauty, but when it came to architectural monuments made by the British invasion, not, not that British invasion, this one, uh, much was left to be desired. Brisbane's fanciest governor at the time, Major Sir Hamilton J. Gould Adams, surprised the people of Brisbane by laying a foundation stone in 1917, declaring he was gonna build a beautiful city hall. The only problem was, no building was designed yet, and Sir Hamilton had no architectural or building skills whatsoever. It wasn't until the Prince of Wales, George V, showed up with a fancier foundation stone in 1920, did actual construction begin. It was during this ceremony, he passed off a sketch by a young Queen Elizabeth as his own, declaring it to be the design of the new hall. It was this very sketch that was turned into the City Council logo we love and revere today. The design was extravagant for the time and was estimated to be the second biggest building project in Australia after the Sydney Harbour Bridge. To save money, local children were used as labourers and some of the carved stonework was actually made of paper mache. This shoddy building process led to the extensive foundational damage that resulted in the hall's temporary closure in 2010 to undergo structural repairs. Only one year into construction, King Edward died, leading to all King Edward themed decorations to be themed to the sexier and more recent King George. This began with the naming of King George Square, George Street, the statue of King George, and Brisbane's favourite, the King George Bargain Basement and Illegal Brothel Casino. The finished building featured lavish offices, subpar offices, the council chambers of Brisbane, and the grand auditorium. Brisbane's finest indoor playground. Originally, the statue of King George faced towards the hall until it was twisted to face its current direction by Andre the Giant on his Australian tour with Hervé Viches, where they sang the hits of Simon and Garfunkel. The two lion statues are a recent addition that were part of a promotion for the Australian touring production of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Many other promotional items have since tried to find a permanent home. But alas, the giant wicked shoes and the kinky boot were not destined for the same fate. Today, City Hall is home to the Museum of Brisbane, housing our three most prized cultural possessions. Clem Jones's gumboot, a drawing of a koala by Princess Diana, and the Indrapilly Zirconium Emerald that disappeared mysteriously after the filming of this episode. Once the tallest building in the city, Brisbane City Hall has been dwarfed by almost every other building surrounding it leaving the old clock tower's face not particularly useful. But while it's covered up by other buildings, we still hear its bellowing chimes penetrate our eardrums, yelling, I'm still here. I'm Warren Logie, and this was Brisbane.